All right, this is the last uh, new material that we're going to cover uh, for AP Calculus. Um, and this is uh, a pretty easy topic, but it is an important topic, and I like to put questions on it on the AP test. So we're going to talk a little bit about slope fields and um, follow along in your packet, and there's some work I'm going to ask you to do, and then stop, stop the video and start the video and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but you can see from the Swabot, students will be able to use a differential equation. Now remember, we have already covered differential equations, and a differential equation is simply an equation that has a derivative in it. So something like, just keeping it simple, dy dx is equal to x. And um, you know, hopefully, or remember that the method of solving a differential equation is to separate the variables, get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other. So separate and then integrate and then solve for y and solve for c if you can. So we're gonna, we'll start with a differential equation and we're going to create a slope field. So in other words, we're going to start with a derivative and we're going to use a derivative to create a slope field. Well, then the question would be, what is a slope field? Well, believe it or not, a slope field is literally a field of slopes. Not like the movie Field of Dreams, but a field of slopes. So if you look at the front cover of your packet, as you can see right here, um, I have an example of a slope field. And what a slope field really is, is a, let me go ahead and define it up here. A slope field is a series of tiny relative term, tangent segments. So in other words, or, or, or let me keep going, at points on a curve. So, so what you can see here is a series, like it's like a family of functions, a series of tiny little tangent segments. Now the curve isn't there. We just have these little tiny tangent segments that are tangent to a number of curves, um, a family of functions that have the same derivative. And you can actually see the shape of the curve. The curve in this case, I don't know what the function is, looks something like that. It is a family of functions that looks like that, following the, uh, uh, the, the little tangent lines. All right, well, let's see what that's all about. Here's another example of um, a kind of a slope field. In this case, I have a family of functions. I have a family of cubic functions, and they all share the same derivative. So um, a cubic function would be something like y equal to x cubed. So I'm going to go at this a little bit backwards to give you an idea of what's going on. The derivative of x cubed, dy dx, is equal to 3x squared. So remember from the beginning of the course, a derivative is simply a slope generator. All right. So if I were to go along the curve, and let's identify the curve y equal to x cubed. It's this one right here. Let me highlight that. It kind of gets lost in there. So that is a family of functions. I have y equal to x cubed, y equal to x cubed, maybe plus 2, plus 4, minus 2, minus 4. It's the family of functions that share this derivative. So I could say um, x cubed plus c represents the family of functions. Now what I could do is I could use my slope generator to generate the slope at a variety of points. For example, the slope at... Um, the slope here is zero, so I could put a tiny little tangent segment here. The slope here, the slope here, all I'm doing is put, instead of putting tangent lines, I'm putting tiny little tangent segments at every point on the graph. So what that does is it, it almost creates, you can almost see the function by just looking at the tiny little tangent segments. All right, so that still may not be enough for you to get an idea of a slope field. So let's actually produce or create a slope field. Um, this is uh, a page in your packet, so please find this page. And if you're at home watching this video um, and you're not in class learning this, uh, I, what I'd like for you to do is to complete this page, 
pause the video while you complete the page and then resume the video and I'll go over it with you uh, but let me make sure you understand what you're doing here you have been given a differential equation so this is a derivative and as you know this derivative belongs to a family of functions so we could separate integrate and get a family of functions that all have this derivative um, what they're asking you to do is they're giving you a variety of points negative 2 0 negative 2 1 negative 2 2 negative 1 0 and what they want you to do is to use your slope generator to find the derivative at these points what does that mean I'm going to substitute negative 2 in place of x I'll do the first one for you and the slope is negative 4 substitute negative 2 in place of x and the slope again is negative 4 so you can see already that wherever x is negative 2 the slope will always be negative 4 because the derivative depends only on x it doesn't really depend on y alright now after you finish completing that chart the next thing they ask you to do is to draw very tiny little segments not tangent lines but draw little segments of the tangent line at these points remember the dy dx represents the slope of the tangent line so I'll give you the first one and then after I set you up I want you to uh, complete the rest of the page by yourself so for example um, highlighting the first values in the table I'm gonna go to the point negative 2 0 so 1 2 0 and at negative 2 0 I should have a slope of negative 4 now you're gonna kinda do your best to think about what would a line look like that has a slope of negative 4 well obviously um, if it has a negative slope it's gonna slant or to the left or decrease and negative 4, you know, negative 1 would be, be about a 45 degree angle. So negative 4 might look something like, like that. And then I'll go to negative 2, negative 1, and I'll put another little tiny tangent segment. Not a tangent line, but a tangent segment so that those segments are parallel to each other. After you put all of these uh, segments on your graph, you should begin to see... Um, the f some of the members of the family that have this derivative so pause the video and finish your slope field because you this is what you're doing you're creating a slope field and go ahead and, and do the entire page answer the questions at the bottom pause the video and then resume the video to see if you got this right and to see what's going on pause the video pause the video do it by yourself okay now that you've come back and you've completed your slope field hopefully you have something that uh, looks like this now part of the problem here if you're wondering like I don't see what's supposed to happen um, they didn't really give us enough values so I'm gonna add some values in here uh, they looked at negative 2 negative 1 0 1 and 2 and you made your tiny little line segments but really I could add more because I can see that everywhere that x is negative 2 the slopes are always negative 4 everywhere that the x value is negative 1 the slopes are always negative 2 everywhere that the x value is 0 the slopes are 0 so I could continue putting in slopes that are parallel to the ones that they have here and this one's a little less steep a little less steep these are 0 0 these are 2 Four. and if you put more of the more of these that you put in here sorry I can't talk into this at the same time the more of these that you put in whoops that one's not parallel the more of these that you put in here then you can actually start to see wow it is a family of parabolas and if you, they actually drew a parabola in so that you can see one of the uh, family members that belong to this derivative so you've just created a slope field and it really is as easy as doing a little bit of arithmetic estimating what the little tangent segments look like and putting them on a graph and this can be a nice free response question uh, because all you have to do is some arithmetic alright in part C they go alright you created a slope field let's generate let's go back and do what we already know how to do let's separate the variables and integrate so we're actually going to solve the differential equation 
when you separate, you're going to get the obviously the x on the other side, and then you're going to integrate, and you get y equal to x squared plus c. So um, the function that they ask you to find, they give you a, uh, an initial condition and ask you to solve for c. One of the particular members is x squared minus 1, and that's the one that they drew up here. But the family of functions that you are creating is x squared plus c, and this slope field actually reveals a family of functions. That's all a slope field is. Little tiny tangent segments that when you put them together and look at them and step away, you can go, wow, I can actually start to see the family um, that have this same derivative. So it's, it's not rocket science. It's actually pretty easy stuff. Um, not sure why I have this page in here because we just talked about that. So let's move on to the next page. All right, here's another example, uh, number two. And again, I'm going to ask you to read this. And you're going to create another slope field. Um, I want you to read the problem. I want you to fill in the table. And I want you to create the slope field. I want you to pause the video to do that, and then we'll resume it in just a minute. But something that I want to tell you is uh, not only do I want you to do these values, because when you do this, it doesn't give you enough, um, enough values, just like the last one, to see everything that you need to see. So I'm going to ask you, in addition to these values that they give you in this table, I'm going to ask you to put a little tangent segment at every point on this entire grid so you're going to make you can make your chart longer you know so I want you to do instead of uh, negative 2 0 I want you to do negative 2 negative 1 negative 2 negative 2 negative uh, 3 negative 1 negative 3 negative 2 I want you to put a little tangent segment at every value something else I want you to notice this time is that in this derivative when you're generating um, all the numbers in this row, the derivative depends not only on x, but it depends on x and y. So this time you have to substitute x and y to generate your derivatives and to draw your tangent segments. And then they're going to ask you to also do what we did before. You look and see if you can see what, you, uh, what the family is. And unless you put those other segments on there, you won't see it. And then they're going to ask you to find a general solution. If you're like, what the heck does that mean? Separate, integrate. All right, pause the video, complete this sheet, then resume the video to see how you did. Pause the video. Pause the video, do it yourself, and then turn the page, and then resume. Okay, now that you're back, you can see that they have completed the table of values. Now, one thing you're noticing is that, hmm, what's going on here, and here, and, and here? Well... Um, everywhere that y is 0 because the derivative is x over 2y I can't let my denominator be 0 so they're writing infinity I don't care if you write infinity undefined it, it doesn't matter and in fact right here they wrote indeterminate form that's not really important what is important is that you understand that they would in many cases be vertical tangent segments except at 0 so now remember I asked you to do more more points than what they more tangent segments than they did here because you should get something that looks whoops looks like this if you put these segments in there and when you put those extra segments in there hopefully you can start to see that oh, okay this is kind of kind of a circular motion but it's not exactly circular in fact it's elliptical so hopefully you can see that this is generating a family of ellipses if you follow the trend of the tangent segments it's becoming elliptical but you needed those extra tangent segments on the bottom to see that um, otherwise the question in part B is kind of hard to answer so based on the slope field, what type of equation do you think the solution for the differential equation will be? We said ellipses. Well, let's prove that. We have the uh, differential equation, so we're going to separate. And when we separate, we get 2y dy is equal to negative x dx 
So we're going to integrate, and when we integrate, we get 2y squared over 2, which is just y squared, equal to negative x squared plus c, sorry, over 2 plus c. Now you may be wondering, how is that an ellipse? Well, if you think back to Algebra 2 or Pre-Cal, wherever you dealt with this, if we move this to the other side, you would get x squared over 2 plus y squared technically over 1 equal to c. And the standard form of an equation of ellipse, at least one that's centered at 0, would be x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equal to uh, 1. That would be the standard form of an ellipse. So this really is the equation of an ellipse. So we we did this algebraically. We actually generated the family of functions and we also did it by using a slope field. Again, slope field, tiny little tangent segments and when you put a whole bunch of them together you can actually start to see the family to whom the derivative belongs. Alright, so what would I what do I want you to do? Well, what I want you to do is uh, for the first day's lesson, I'm going to just continue one video on this, but the first day's lesson, you are to actually generate slope fields for all of these problems in your packet, one through six. And you don't have to make a table, but if, it, if making a table helps you. Now, I want you to put a little tangent segment at every dot that you see. So I'll start out the first one. Uh, one thing I notice in problem number one is that the derivative always depends on the variable x. So the y value doesn't really matter. So for example, if I'm going to start at 0, 0. When x is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, the slope is 1. So I have a 45 degree angle. Um, and that's going to be true for every value uh, uh, where x is 0. So all I have to do now is know that these are, are going to be parallel to each other because the y value doesn't matter. I don't use the y value to generate the slope in this problem. Uh, if x is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's going to be a little bit steeper. At every value x equal 1, the slope will be the same. And so that's all you're going to do is fill in the um, slope field and see if you can figure out what it's generating. Hopefully you can see, think ahead that if we were to find the antiderivative of this, since it's linear, it would take us back to a parabola and we should see a family of parabolas forming in our slope field. Uh, in number two, the derivative depends only on y. So in this case, we're going to, we should have a series of horizontal rows that share the same derivative. In number three, you're going to use x and y. So if I were going to put, let's say, um, a little tangent segment, if I were going to use the point one, one. Well, I'd plug in 1 in for x and 1 in for y. 1 plus 1 is 2, so at the point 1, 1, I'm going to put a slope that looks like it's about 2. And, and that's relative. Nobody's going to take out any kind of measuring device and go, is it really 2? Um, you just have to show that there's some difference between 1 and 2, etc. Okay, so your assignment is to do 1 through 6. Do all six of these, so I would probably just close out YouTube, do it, and then come back and resume the video. Uh, look at the time counter to see where you are and where you need to pick up the video. Uh, because the next thing I'm going to do is reveal the answers and you need the practice of doing this yourself. Remember, it's the practice that uh, makes you able to do this, not just watching me. So stop the video, do this, and then come back and resume the video and check your answers and we'll go on to something else. Have you stopped the video? Why not? Okay, here we go. All right, welcome back. Um, these are the solutions for the slope fields that you created. Some observations that I would like for you to make. Uh, again, we said earlier that in this case, the derivative depends only on x. And if you'll notice, well, first of all, it did generate a family of parabolas. You can see the parabolas going like that. All right, so it is a family of parabolas. Now let me get rid of that. Um, but something else I want you to notice, because this is going to help you do something else. When the derivative depends only on x, notice that along every vertical column, 
the slopes are parallel. And that makes sense because the y value doesn't have an impact on the derivative. So at every value of x, you're going to have exactly the same slope. So all of these little segments are parallel to each other, and you don't have to literally find the derivative at each point. You find the derivative at one value of x, and you make them all parallel to each other. And then you can see um, or create the slope field much more easily. The same thing is true whenever the derivative depends only on y. This time, since the derivative depends only on y, everybody who has the same y value is going to have the same slope. So you get rows of tangent segments that are parallel to each other. So again, if you depend only on x, then you get vertical parallel tangents. If you depend only on y, you get horizontal parallel tangent segments. Something to note, something that will help you when we go on to the next phase of this. All right, in problem number three, the slopes were dependent upon x and y, and so you can see um, the slope field that was created, and you had to kind of go point by point unless you uh, discovered some patterns. Number four, again, we depend only on x, so we will notice that the slopes along vertical lines will be parallel to each other. In number five, the slopes depend only on y, so we're going to notice um, horizontal lines that have parallel tangent segments. And in number six, the slopes depend on y and x, and you should have a uh, slope field that looks something like that. And if you if it didn't work out that way or you're confused, you can come in and ask me some questions. All right, so what's the next thing that they can ask us to think about or to do with slope fields? Okay. Well, on this page, they ask us, and this is in your packet again, to match each slope field. So they're already giving you the slope field with the equation that the slope field could represent. All right, so the slope field is representing these functions. So a derivative was given. Somebody took the derivative and created these slope fields. And then your job is to look at these functions and figure out, all right, when I look at these slope fields, I'm looking for a family of y equal to ones. So that would be like one plus c. So I'm looking for horizontal lines, a field of horizontal lines. Well, duh, I think d for duh, you can see that d is a family of horizontal lines. I'll do one more for you and then I'm gonna let you do the rest by yourself. In number eight, I'm looking for a family of y equal x. Now we know that the line y equal to x is a line that's 45 degrees to the origin. So I'm looking for a family of those, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Well, let's see. I spy, ooh, I think I spy one down here, letter H. Y equal to X, Y equal to X plus something, X plus something, X plus something, X minus something. So the family of functions is H, and this was D. All right, I want you to take the time to go through and um, identify which function belongs to which graph or which graph belongs to which function. Stop the video, do that now, and then come back. Okay, you notice I didn't give the answers to those. Uh, you're welcome to come and see me to, to verify your answers. I'm going to move on to the next um, activity, which is matching slope fields with their differential equations. So this is a little different than what we were doing on the other page. You have the slope fields, but this time you don't have the family, you actually have the derivatives. So there are several ways to do this. First thing I would do, for example, in number 15, I have a derivative and his family member, his, his uh, solution his solution is somewhere up here. Well, I would think, all right, if this is 1 half x plus 1, if I find the antiderivative, that would get me to x squared. So I'm looking for a family of parabolas. And so when I look at the graphs, I can see, well, there's a family of parabolas. 
So this differential equation created this slope field. Uh, number 16 is pretty easy because look, the derivative depends only on y, so I'm looking for a family that has um, horizontal rows whose tangents have the same slope. So I look at D, and when I look at D, I can see that everybody along a row has horizontal, I'm sorry, has parallel tangent segments. So I know that that belongs to D. Same thing. Now in number 17, you have to think a little bit more because the derivative depends on X and Y. Um, one thing I notice is that when X and Y are equal, for example, at the point 1, 1, the slope should be 0. 2, 2, the slope should be 0. 3, 3, the slope should be 0. So can I find something that does, yeah, right here, letter C. The slope at 1, 1 is 0. 2, 2, 3, 3, blah, 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 blah. So I have C, and my process of elimination, 18 has to be A. Okay, now there's some, I know there's some other problems perhaps in your packet, but I want you to go on to this next problem. Um, another thing that they can ask you with slope fields is multiple choice question. And I'm going to teach you some strategies to help you to eliminate these. And then we'll be done with this packet. You're going to finish the rest of it and come in and ask me any questions that you have. Which of the following slope fields is consistent with this derivative? So in other words, here's the derivative. You find the slope field. What's the first thing you notice? The derivative depends only on y. If the derivative depends only on y, what do we say? We're looking for a slope field of uh, tangent segments that are parallel to each other. So I'm looking for rows of slopes that are the same. Well, pretty quickly I can see that this is the only graph that has rows whose tangent segments are parallel to each other. Hopefully you can see that as well. In other words, in number three, the, the slopes here in this row are not the same. They're changing. They're different at different values. And the same thing is true over here. Pick a row and the slopes are changing. They're not the same. If the slope depends only on y, then I should have rows of tangent segments that are parallel to each other. Okay, I'll do one or two more and then I'm going to leave the rest for you and then I'm going to ask you to come in and ask me questions if you're confused. Which of the following differential equations is consistent with the following slope field? So this time I have a graph and I have to pick out which derivative generated the graph. So these are derivatives that generated this graph. I want to figure out who it is. Well, you'll notice first of all that every derivative, in this case, the derivatives have x and y. This is a strategy that I think is very easy to figure this out. What I do is make a little sign chart, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this would be sign chart number one, sign chart number two, sign chart number three. What do you mean by a sign chart? Well, I look at this first derivative and I go, all right, the derivative is generated by taking an x value divided by a y value. And it's also y squared, so if it's x, y squared, that means I have x, always divided by a positive number. Well, in the first quadrant, x values are positive and y values are positive. So a positive divided by a positive gives me a positive. So I'm, should, I would be expecting for this derivative, he would generate only positive slopes. So I'm looking for quadrant one to have only positive slopes. And so far, um, this graph passes the test. I go to the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, um, x values are negative and y values, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to divide by a positive. So x values are negative, then I expect negative slopes. So far this passes. In the third quadrant, x values are negative, divided by a positive is a negative. Again, so far this graph passes the test. And then in the fourth quadrant, x values are positive, divided by a positive is a positive. So I would say, all right, so far this guy is still in the game because he, uh, the slopes in the slope field meet the criteria. Let's see if we can eliminate anybody. For Roman numeral 2, I have x divided by y. So in the first quadrant, a positive divided by a positive is a positive. 
In the second quadrant, a positive divided by, excuse me, a negative divided by a positive would be a negative. So far, I can't eliminate anything. In the third quadrant, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Ah, these slopes in the third quadrant aren't positive, so he's out. He did not, this derivative did not create that slope field. In number three, I have x squared over y, which, so that means I have an always positive divided by y. In other words, y is going to determine the outcome. In the first quadrant, y values are positive, so I get a positive. In the second quadrant, y values are positive, so I get a positive, and look. In the second quadrant, the slopes are negative, so he could not have produced that slope field, so it has to be 1. And I want you to go through, I want you to finish the rest of these, number 2, number 3, um, and you may run into a question. You may have some things that you're not quite sure about, but finish up the packet, come in and ask me your specific questions. Um, and then the next time I see you, we'll probably be starting the review. So I uh, hope this video is helpful. See you when I see you.